All right, recording. Slap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you hit a mosquito. Hey, Joe. Hello, America. <laughs> Episode 17. With our good friend, Ava Vitali. Ava has a master's in Egyptology. She was the Egyptology in residence at the Morbid... Morbid Anatomy Museum, and uh, she was also uh, worked previously at the Met. So she has some uh, things under her belt, and she knows what she's talking about, uh, which is good because I never do. Hey, Joe, what movie did we watch? We have watched the epically famous Captain Marvel, small indie flick. Maybe you've heard of it, and uh, we're going to review that. And then, as we review that, we're going to, uh, even though it is not on theme, it is on theme for Miss Ava. We have some mummy discovery kits. Nice. We're going to dig up both uh, mummies and sarcophagi, I believe, Ooh, how it works. Oh, look at that. Again, as always, we have not opened these. We do not know what's inside them, just what's on the outside box. As always, I am Dro, your drunk nerd. Today I'm drinking vodka and one of Nick Fasulo's favorite beverages, Diet Dr. Peps. Uh, I do not drink diet soda. I am drinking his second favorite thing, Diet Dr. Peps. That's not how that works. Shh. I am drinking some seltzer and some vodka. Root beer! Cheers. Oh, that was a loud root beer. Come here. I did that backwards. And because it's still squashing beef, this bottle of vodka was full when I started. This is a liter bottle of vodka, not a 750. So um, that started full when I opened it. It's now down to here. And we'll see where the end of the episode takes me. Probably not in a good place. And as always, so many spoilers. Upwards of 12. Probably more. Joe wrote a novel's worth of notes. And of course, let's time this mess. <laughs> we probably could have reused our tools from our dinosaur day. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna put Ava to work on this one. It's actually though, like, real hieratic. Oh I God. mean, they're not super accurate. Which way is up? Uh, this way. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, they use right, the right symbols, but they put them in a lot of different directions. Oh, look, there's people on the side. These are actually real. There's a quail chick. There's an onk. Look, that's a Cena man. A Cena man? A Cena man? A seated man. Oh, 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 sorry. It's Brendan Frazier. <laughs> Fraser. Frazier. Hold on. Don't do anything, Joe. Stop talking. Too late. This actually very beautifully made block compared to compared to our uh, dinosaur blocks. Well, they've done actually a decent job recreating on the top of it, like the hieratic script, which is the um, cursive type of everyday hieroglyphs um, that you would you, have you used when you wrote down like casual descriptions. I believe these paints were pulled from actual canopic jars, right? Is any of what I just said correct? Canopic jars have organs. organs in them. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, so yeah. Good fact, in the Victorian era, they used to make medicine and paint out of ground up mummies. It was called mumia, and it was brown. Um, opening remarks? Captain Marvel was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. Thanks for coming, folks. Yeah. It was good, but it was overburdened by expectations, oh. so it needed to be better than good. I, I felt very similarly. I actually liked it better than Wonder Woman, which we'll discuss why at a later point. I didn't like it astronomically better. I wasn't like, oh my god, that film taught me lessons that I didn't really understand before I saw it. <laughs> Nick? Yeah, what they said. I think it, it, it was on par with the usual Marvel quality. Personally, I, I enjoyed it just because I sort of shut my brain off and I just enjoy the ride. I They're always visually stunning. Uh, I mean, I guess. Some spots look not so visually stunning, but for the most part, uh, I think it was on par for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, I have some other points, but we'll, we'll get to them. Let's do it. Dig in. See, look at that. It's gonna go right in. All right, that's cheating though. Oh, I found something. Come on! <laughs> What? You guys are cheating. We're just supposed to whack it. Yeah, but what if you damage the, the bones underneath? Don't stab your hand, please. I've actually excavated things, people. Actually, excavated people. <laughs> you want to pour water on yours? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on good word that mud existed in, the, in ancient Egypt. Oh yes it did. Oh yeah. this is weird, so the skeleton's actually already in the sarcophagus. That's usually how it works when you dig up a yeah, skeleton. Well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's learning. You gotta get like the good archaeology puns in. My life is in ruins. I'll I mean, date any old thing. I like to do it in the field. Uh, there was a lot of uh, talk before the movie was released, discussing that the movie was going to be uh, pro-military. I found that this movie was actually very against military. It's her being in a military institution and about just how they're like, oppress your emotions, oppress who makes you you, just follow the rules and don't think about your past. Just do your job. Yeah. And the movie was really against that.
that. I thought one of the like most striking moments for me was that moment where basically at the end the Creed general says like my hands are dirty too. Like, There's no innocent people here. Yeah. I broke his head off. <laughs> I broke the mummy's head off. You're the pro. It's a skeleton. His head would come off anyways. Whatever. I kind of read the like, you have to suppress your emotions the way like people say like women are emotional, which I think there's an element of both those things too. I, it was nice. This was not a commercial for the US military. I know that people in Myro had a reaction to was when they said like in 1989, they were saying like, oh, women weren't allowed to fly combat when you disappeared. And there was like definitely a moment of like, oh. Shit. That's actually like an, an, another, what I would say, like a an, definitely another positive moment that I have about this film is that they definitely focused on um, marginalized people and trying to give them agency. I felt like they did that in a lot of ways, except with Nick Fury's character. And in this movie, I felt like they had a real opportunity to do a lot with him, and they didn't. Well, I mean, did you really think they were going to make him like as gritty and like yes. real as you really did? My biggest complaint with this movie is that I think it had a major authenticity issue. To itself? To or... its, I felt like it was cosplaying the 90s. I mean, Normally, you would be like, okay, that's what... I mean, but you like, were there. <laughs> but coming off a movie like Black Panther, where even like the first 10 minutes take place in like 1992 and that was so authentically 1992 it's striking to see a movie where i didn't feel like they had made that effort to get it there as i've spoken about in the past i'm a bit of a sucker for nostalgia so i was like oh yeah blockbuster guys we all went to blockbuster soundtrack was fun but <sighs> you, you, you didn't like it i mean it was top 40s but the soundtrack for me felt sort of like I liked it. I liked all those songs. I listened to all those songs. Those songs are great. It felt like to me, it was sort of like if you put in a, that's what they call 90s soundtrack. The music just felt like if you walked up to 10 people on the street and said like, name songs from the, like everybody yeah. would come up with this list. I felt like they could have done a little better. Maybe some deeper and cuts. The moment I keep comparing it to is in Guardians of the Galaxy, when the chain comes on during that big battle. As soon as they started that, I was like, they are not doing this. There's no way this will work. And it worked <laughs> it and worked. it was amazing. And it was like this gamble. And I would have liked to see a little bit more. So Sal made a great comment to me after the movie. And so he's like, I thought that Samuel L. Jackson was gonna die. And that this entire time, Samuel L. Jackson's been this scroll. Ah, oh, that would have been amazing. Right! <laughs> like he had to stay behind and pretend to be Samuel L. Jackson. The movie just falls short of like all of these great things that the movie could have been. I like that she was the catalyst for Fury, like coming up with this whole initiative. Like that was a thing. Did you? You threw out my mommy head. It's not this. Get digging, Joe. Uh -oh. It's right there. See, that's why I'm an archaeologist. Oh. <laughs> My favorite Easter egg, and there weren't a lot, was the Mallrats reference. Did you see on Twitter? That actually had Kevin Smith in tears. And also, I went back and I rewatched that scene from Mallrats, and it's such a like heartwarming scene. And it's not just like a, a cameo; it's like a real. Oh no! It drives scene. the plot. And like Mallrats is not a like. If you haven't seen Mallrats, go watch Mallrats. But it was like not a mainstream. No, movie no, not at all. Released. It's come <laughs> full circle. Like, oh my god. <laughs> Like a cat. <laughs> I'm a better cat than stupid goose was. Like, it's not hard to do cat right. That should have been a slam dunk, and it was not. There was a very interesting political parallel of refugees having their families split apart and being held apart, you know, against their will. Timely. I think they rewrote that quickly. I or it think, was already part of the story. I think it might have already been part of the story, and they were like, they just amped it up. let's just touch on it. Because I can't help but notice that she went against her government to stand for the refugees and to stand for the broken families. That seems not accidental. But yeah, no, um... More water. I don't want to mansplain something you're oh, a professional at doing. Get it wet. Here's a... Ready? Ready? Random question. Do you think that half of the scrolls died in the snap? Yeah. So do you think then in Endgame, Captain Marvel, as she's now shown up and just watched half the people that she's been trying to save for 20 years, watch them, half of them die. Knows that something's up. That's a hell of a point. I hey. hope they touch on it. It's gonna be A or B. Um, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of scrolls, there was a lot of rumors that they were gonna be like, Captain America has actually been a scroll the whole time. They've been infiltrating. I think this movie squashes that whole rumor. I will say this, and this I actually have down as a positive note, is that for the last decade, Marvel has been very loosely been following their comics. Obviously they've been you know, navigating what I would call muddy waters. Now I feel like for the first time, this was kind of like a moment that they've now set, that they've defined it, that we are no longer following our, our comic origins and we are now kind of doing things however we want. And yeah, and like now it's like, no, Kree are evil warmongers and 
scrolls are good. I like that I don't know where it's going. You hit that point where like, I don't know what's gonna happen, where they're going after this. And it's kind of a nice feeling. So now we're, uh, we've cleaned up ourselves a little bit. So now we can uh, wrap our mummies, paint our mummies, make our lives a better place. This is hay. <laughs> this is not working for me. Mine actually came out pretty good because she doesn't have out. a head. One of my problems with her as a character is that she played it very uh, indifferent, is how I felt. I felt a lot of her role was just, I've been lost. This is what's happened. I don't care that she didn't play the role. Like, you know, like everyone's like, she doesn't smile. Like this has been like the big internet thing. I don't really care about that. But she didn't either seem angry or sad or anxious. A lot of the time she was flat. She was non-interested. And that bothered me. I'm like, I don't want a main character that is uninterested in their own story. They played her like she had trauma, which would have been interesting if they had- Focused done, on the trauma. If they had done the work of that, of like realizing like, they were lazy with that emotional work of like, I am realizing I've been manipulated to do horrible things and I've essentially been kept captive and away from my loved ones. Like realizing that you were ripped away from these people and kept away from these people that had meaning to you and that loved you. Like that's what she's struggling with and you just don't- I didn't feel that. That's what I mean. Like that, like she I just think... seemed like, oh yeah, that happened to me. I think there's is so many ways that they succeeded and so many ways that they failed. I'm excited to see the next one because that's the moment. For All some. right, everyone, everyone, mummies, mummies. <laughs> I think mine's the prettiest. Okay. I mean, mine's definitely the ugliest, but no, Nick, yours looks great. Yeah. If Ava's had a head, it would look better. Look how thick the the spine is. It okay. Just... <laughs> I do like that they made an effort to explain sort of where. She she's been, as opposed to like in Wonder Woman, where it's like, I'm sad my boyfriend died, so I sat out all of World War II. <laughs> and this is a point that I've been wanting to bring up for literally years. Why has Fury not texted her before today? In Avengers 1, yeah. the invasion of New York, he should have been like, bleep, 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 bleep. Wait, I'm, what should he have been like? Bleep, 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 bleep. I mean, especially since, especially since, <gasps> it's called the Avengers Initiative, and he wrote it based he on her f***ing name. Do we think if she was never taken back to be a Kree, if they hadn't infused her Lepre blood, she would have been just as powerful, or do we think she would have died from her exposure? Do you think the Kree blood stabilized her? I think that's a good question. It happened. <laughs> I think it did. I think that helps. That helps my brain. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I want to know why you feel like this was better than Wonder Woman. I um, overall um, hated the ending to Wonder Woman. I thought the whole thing of like her her final battle with Ares was terrible. I agree. He's like, no, like you know, don't you understand what humans are doing? They're evil, and he's and she goes, I pick love, and I was just like, oh my god, I didn't, I did not realize that I was watching a Sailor Moon cartoon this entire time. Like, oh my fucking god. I actually do have a shirt that is Sailor Moon just like Wonder Woman. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I liked the overall moral arc of Captain Marvel more than the overall moral arc of Wonder Woman. And maybe we were supposed to wait till these dried completely to paint them? Mine was dry, it just, it just sucks. They're just giddy thin paints. Be better. That's how I feel about this movie. <laughs> Should we wrap up, Joe? Ava's <laughs> just putting the finishing touches on her masterpiece. Ava, as the guest, what would you rate this film? Six out of 10. Okay. I think because I'm not gonna go out of my way to watch it again. And I don't feel like I get much from watching it again. But I think it's like, I, did, I wasn't upset I saw it. So it was just a, a nice addition to the Marvel story. Yeah, like I'm yeah. more interested to see where this character goes from here than the story they told in this movie. I, I think I agree with literally everything you just said. Um, I will rate it slightly higher, maybe a six and a half. I would even give it a seven. It's not a bad movie. Uh, it's just not a great movie. Uh, on my arbitrary scale, I will give this 72 slimy <laughs> tesseracts okay. out of... <laughs> 89 hacking florgans. I'm committed to my art. The starter is a full bottle. It's now down to whatever that is. Again, this is a full liter. Jeez, that would knock me on my butt. So, I mean, I've had a good And just day. for the record, I was not drinking out of that. Like, <laughs> comment below, subscribe, ding the bell, so you're notified whenever we create new content. May you have a happy tomorrow and a, I don't know. Peaceful afterlife. Bye. Bye.